Platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, is such an incredible treatment technique. It uses your own cells, your own platelets, your own growth factors to treat your body. But did you know there are a lot of variables that could significantly affect the outcomes of your PRP treatment? And many of these variables are things that you can actually control. So in this video, we're gonna look at which variables can affect the potential efficacy of PRP in order to optimize for the best outcomes. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. My goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so the goal of platelet-rich plasma is to use your own body's platelets and your own body's growth factors to initiate a cascade of pro and anti-inflammatory mediators that ultimately reduce pain and reduce symptoms. Such processes include cell migration, cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and controlling inflammation. And because people PRP involves activating such a complicated signaling cascade in the body, there are many things that could potentially interfere with those signaling pathways. And if those pathways are interrupted, then you may not get a good outcome. So this review article tried to summarize some of the most common variables that could affect outcomes related to platelet-rich plasma. I'm gonna break it down into two major categories. The first is a person's overall health and physiology and how we can try to optimize that. The second is consumables, such as medications or drugs, and how they affect platelet function. Okay, so the first category is a person's overall health and physiology, and we'll start with blood pressure. We all know high blood pressure is bad. It results in cardiac remodeling, eventually leading to heart failure and cardiovascular disease. But high blood pressure also affects platelets. The author writes that high blood pressure induces platelets to release their factors into the blood plasma and can decrease overall platelet number. Therefore, trying to achieve optimal blood pressure control prior to a PRP injection may be beneficial and improve outcomes. Of course, this is easier said than done. One of the most effective ways to decrease blood pressure is to participate in aerobic exercise, something like a brisk walk or cycling or jogging. We know aerobic exercise and endurance exercise helps to reduce inflammatory markers that circulate in the body. This is something that stretching and strengthening exercises are not able to do. Aerobic exercises also promote the production of anti-inflammatory signaling molecules and release endorphins and catecholamines. This is what makes us feel good after exercise and is what is responsible for the runner's high phenomenon. Okay, so that's blood pressure. Now what about diet? How does diet affect platelet properties? Well, it turns out that diets high in saturated fats can negatively affect platelet function. Most PRP preparations end up with a clear golden yellow plasma. However, when someone's cholesterol or triglycerides are extremely high, their PRP ends up being a cloudy yellow or even a milky white. These are very different from normal PRP and in these circumstances, I can physically see the differences in their PRP and of course, this would negatively affect outcomes. Okay, so that's fats. What about blood sugar? We know higher glucose concentrations will actually activate platelets. You may think this is a good thing because we want the platelets to be activated, but the key thing here is we want the platelets to be activated after they are injected into their target tissue, not before. So if you have high blood glucose going into your PRP injection, then many of your platelets could have already been activated. This means that they have already been quote unquote used up. And if they've already been used up, then you have less overall platelets to work in the target tissue. So what diet should you be looking at? In general, you want to be eating a heart-healthy, anti-inflammatory diet focused on vegetables and plant-based foods. Great examples of this include the Mediterranean diet as well as the DASH diet. Okay, now switching gears away from nutrition, let's talk about mental and physical stress. We know stress is responsible for all sorts of negative health outcomes, but does it affect your platelets? The author writes that stress induces a surge in blood hormone levels such as adrenaline, noradrenaline, and serotonin, all of which increase platelet sensitivity to thrombin, aggregation, and factor release. What this means is is that stress causes the release of stress hormones. And these stress hormones go on to affect platelet function. So trying to reduce mental and physical
physical stress leading up to a PRP injection would help maintain the integrity of platelets and their normal function. Okay, so that was the first category. Now let's move on to the second category, which is drugs and consumables. And we'll start with alcohol and tobacco. The author writes that increasing levels of alcohol consumption are associated with decreased platelet activation as well as platelet aggregation and reduced platelet response to thrombin and collagen. The same is true for smoking cigarettes. So trying to reduce or eliminate alcohol or tobacco prior to a PRP injection may improve outcomes. The next thing is medications. We know if you take common over-the-counter pain or anti-inflammatory medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, or naproxen before or after a PRP injection, you will have significantly worse outcomes. And the reason for this is because all of these medications are in the NSAID class of drugs, and NSAIDs work by inhibiting platelets. So if you take any of these medications, you are essentially inhibiting and negating the effects of the PRP injection. I made an entire video discussing this topic and going into depth about the timing of when you need to stop and when it may be okay to restart these medications. I'll link that video here for you to check out. Now, the important thing to understand here is that many of these variables that we just discussed are theoretical. The only one that has been shown to clearly affect outcomes related to orthobiologics is taking NSAID medications. All the others are theoretical, and whether they truly affect outcomes, we don't yet know, and we need more research. With that said, all of these variables are modifiable and in general are things that someone should be incorporating into a healthy and active lifestyle. And if you have more questions about platelet-rich plasma, check out my video where I answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get about PRP. Thanks for watching.